Please come in. Hi, pleased to meet you. Hi, Joe. I'm Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Hello. Hi. Welcome to Hi. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Pleased to meet you. Nice meeting you. And who's this little one here? This is Nathan. Hello. When Joe first arrived, we were ecstatic. This is great. We finally got somebody to help us. However, when she walked in the door, Nate was shrieking. This is not what I wanted somebody to see. It's obvious we needed help, but I, I'd like to greet a guest properly. Hi, Ari. Hi. Hello. That's Ari excited. When I first saw Joe, she came in, she saw us, she saw the kids, and I said, this is going to be someone who can help us. Thank you very much. Welcome. I feel very honored. Well, we're happy to have you come Thank and help you. us. Thank you very much. Please carry on as you normally would, all right? And I'm just going to take mental notes and just watch how everyone interacts here. OK. As I started observing, Will took me around a quick tour of the house. Oh, the naughty mat is a welcome mat. And then we'll wipe my feet on it, or will you sit on this one? Oh, so you've been reading as well? Yeah, we had a couple books on uh, parenting that we've been looking through. We sought out textbooks. We sought out colleagues that are familiar with this area of expertise in child behavior, and we would try techniques at home. We weren't very successful. Michelle, has Nate been potty trained at all yet? Um, he'll go to the toilet pee when he wants um, yeah. on his terms. <laughs> we, we tried training diapers, but he's not into that yet. He still likes his diaper. When Nate goes pee pee on the toilet, we are ecstatic and we want to give a lot of praise for that. So we come up with cheers, we come up with the pee pee dance, and we want to encourage Nate to use the bathroom. So this is the sleeping room? Or the sleeping room, room living this room, is kitchen. Their, this is their bedroom, the boys' bedroom. This is their bedroom. I started to take note of how small the house was. I mean, the boys sleep in the living room. That's got to be a problem every now and then. And then I noticed, like, these bungee cords clipped onto everything. The chairs are tied together. They move as one piece. It's harder for them to take the chair over here. They'll get up on this, and they'll take this and throw it down to make a big noise, and it breaks everywhere. So we just, you know, had to childproof. There's two reasons that we had that level of security. One was for safety. That was the first. And the second one was for convenience. We had to strap the stove shut down here, because what they do is the three-year-old would get the one-year-old in there and then close it. And he had figured out how to turn it on, and he's, he's going to cook his brother or electrocute him. What? Nate put his brother in the oven? My words, I tell you what, I don't think the Bank of England is as secure as this house. What the parents have used are these big bike cords to hold everything together so that the children don't go in there as a means of controlling the situation rather than teaching the children no. After the tour, Nate was jumping up and down on the couch and Dad wanted him to get down. Nathan, I just asked you to get down off of there. Get down off the back. Guys, you can't go on the back of the couch. Hey, 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 hey. If you somersault off of there, you're going to hit the floor and it's going to hurt, OK? And he didn't listen, and he hurt his toe. OK, why don't you get something for his toe? OK, I know just what he needs. OK. OK, here we go, buddy. You have the ointment? OK, just a little bit. See, we don't put lots on, because lots can get really messy. Is that better? Does that feel better already? Honey, you just put lip gloss on his toe. Yeah, it was placebo. <laughs> I couldn't find anything else, and I figured that would make him feel better. I just thought it would be a good placebo for his toe. Yeah. Right. It worked. He's all better now, right? Is it cured? Yeah. Uh, Dad does like to pull a fast one and patch things up quickly. Have a sippy cup. I just filled one up. You know what? You get a sippy cup. All right. All right. This is all you get, sweetie. <laughs> That's a screech and a half. Boy. Ari's a year and a half, and he loves his bottles, but now I know how he gets it. Let's do it. We're going to eat in a minute. Come on, let's do the truck. Ari shrieking has driven our neighbors insane to the point where they have called the cops twice. Would you normally give him a sippy cup? Um, I tried. But it's, I can't last this long. Here. It's trained me very well, so I respond to the shrill scream. It, it, it's a painful stimulus, and it, he practiced it for a year and a half until he perfected it. If mum and dad give in to every time Ari screeches, then he's never going to learn how to ask properly, and he'll just get what he wants all the time.
I was just gonna throw together a few things to bring with me to the store and then we'll okay. go shopping. All right. Later on, Will said that he was taking the boys to the supermarket. I wonder how that's gonna pan out. Okay, here we go. We made it to the store. We gotta go in the cart, son. And Will hadn't even got inside yet before he seemed all flustered. Because, no, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Stay inside, please. Thank you. Please don't eat it. Here. You have been licking it. Yeah, I know, you're just licking it. All right, all right, stay inside, bud. Shopping with the boys, with both of them together in a store, is stressful for me. It makes me feel embarrassed. All right, all right, stay inside. Okay, it's, we're almost done, guys. Okay. Whoa. Will was a bag of nerves. He was working himself up into a right frenzy. Okay, no, please put down the pen. Okay, Hi. stop. No, please stop. No, no, don't kick it. We're almost. Sorry, stop. My word, it was quite an ordeal. And Dad just didn't need to go through any of that. When we got back home, things got just as hectic there as they were in the store. Okay, Nate, you're not supposed to go in the power outlet, okay? You'll go to timeout if you play with electricity, okay? Timeout's not a game. Timeout's a consequence. Nathan, Nathan, okay, guess what? Last warning, don't play with that. That's electricity, okay? Exactly how many warnings was Dad going to give? Nathan, give me your four. Nathan, okay, guess what? You have to come to timeout. Wait right there. Okay, come here. So you're in timeout for just a minute. You stay here, I'll get the timer. Okay. So the timer's right there. When it beeps, you can come out of timeout. What is Will thinking putting the timer next to Nate? Nathan, you can't touch the timer when you're in timeout. Nathan, if you come out of timeout, it starts over. So you go back. So you're in timeout. When the beeper goes off, you can come out. What luck. It was a short timeout. <laughs> Guys, come, come. What was that? Did I blink? Trade one more time. I've got to be honest with you. I don't know what kind of discipline Will was doing with Nate. I don't think he stayed on that naughty mat for 10 seconds. As the evening was winding down, I thought that Will would start to get the boys ready for bed. Little did I know he had his own unique style of doing that. So we're going to do something else, guys. We're going to go and look for frogs. Frogs? Right, OK, well, um, let's go frog hunting okay. then. OK. One of the things we do in the evening, we go out and we go frog hunting. This was a tool for me to have fun with the boys and also start them to slow down, get that last burst of energy out of them before I bring them in to go to bed. Pitch black and we're going frog hunting. Ari, you got the flashlight? Come on. I'll tell you what, I've never gone frog hunting in a pair of three-inch heels, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> OK. I've been flops. <laughs> Ari, here, Ari, shine your light over here. Here, come with me. One, one more spot. We'll look right where Fred usually is. Did Fred you see one? Shoe. Did you see one where? Well, we found a frog, so I suppose that's one good thing. I'm a little bit confused how that's winding down the children. They're all hyped up. Come on, guys. Let's go around this way. Instead of winding the kids down, Mum and Dad did exactly the opposite by taking them frog hunting. How are they going to get the kids to bed now? Mom and I are going to go to bed, so you're going to have to go get in your bed. No, get your bed. Nathan, I do not want you in here. You. No, no, you're going to go to bed where you always go to bed, right over there. It's really not ideal that the boys are sleeping in the living room, but Will and Michelle, they're just letting the boys run bedtime. No, there is no more one more book. Ari, go to somebody's bed. Any bed's fine, but not ours. <laughs> <laughs> I see two tired people. Unfortunately, it's not the kids. What do you want? That? No, it's not playtime. It's almost nine. It's like a slumber party. Too much talking. Judging by the state of affairs, these boys are not going to go to bed soon, and I've seen enough. Night night. Everybody's going to sleep now, right? Night night. Good night. Will and Michelle are a lot of fun, but this isn't a laughing matter for them. There's just no way they can keep up doing what they've been doing, so I've got to sit them down so we can have a conversation first thing in the morning. What a fun, loving couple you guys really are. I love the spirit that you both have and, and the real energy that you put into the home, but... 
Where's the common sense, guys? We probably don't have it. Let's talk about discipline. Are you parents too scared to say no to the kids? No, no, no we're I'm not gonna say no. We say no. Why do not follow through? And that's, I think, the inconsistency they get. Let's talk about bedtimes in this house. Mm -hmm. It is madness. That is a fact. No, it is. There is no transition between night and day that you guys establish for the children. Half an hour before they go to bed, they're out there frog hunting. Mm -hmm. I mean, seriously, I, I was in hysterics yesterday. But half an hour before the kids are going to bed, Will? Yeah, we usually try and do the frog hunt at around 7. It's all hyped up. And then by the time the kids come in, there's no, there's no resting period. I feel it's about time that you guys really started to understand why your children behave the way they do. And you see the control that Nate has? Oh, he has a lot of control. control it comes from the pair of you. From day we one, gave it to you him. have it. I want to talk about the way Ira grabs his parents' attention. The wild banshee scream. It's very effective. Why well, allow it? We don't know we how don't to know stop to it. Do. I'm feeling frustrated. I'm feeling exhausted. And I'm looking for the easiest solution. And so, I give in. I know I do. I mean, let's yeah. face it. You guys didn't get where you were professionally because you decided to take a week off here and there, not bother to go in. You're actually passionate about what you do for a living. The same energy, the same investment, the same heart, the same passion, the same love. It's what you should be putting into your kids. Right. The good news is, is that your children are able to learn very, very quickly, minding their parents are able to learn very, very quickly. And it means that you've got to knuckle down and go, OK, I'm going to take responsibility for this and actually do the job I'm meant to be doing as a parent. It made me feel a little foolish to find out that some of the problems we had were very simple, common sense things. There's lots of work to be done. Jo had some harsh things to say because she saw what her problems were and she's ready to address it, so I'm ready to go. So are you ready for change? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> We're ready to go. All let's right. Go. Okay. Bye. I think Will and Michelle can make some really big changes. And if they apply themselves, it'll be easier for them. So the first thing I want to tackle is the boys. Ari off the bottle and Nate potty trained. What we are going to talk about now is potty training, OK? Nate is still in diapers. He's three years old. I feel he's more than capable of being in big boy pants. What hasn't happened with Nate is consistency. He's had training pants, then he's had a diaper. Training pants, then a diaper. And what that has given him is mixed messages. We are going to now make a decision that during the day, he will be in underpants, full stop. During the night time, a diaper. Wow. OK. I wasn't sure if Nathan was ready to go directly from diapers to underwear. Nate. This is your new potty, because you're a big boy now, and this is where you do a wee-wee. So when he goes for a pee, and if he goes there, OK, talk to him first about it and then take off. OK? Let him feel, let him feel what it feels like. Let him feel that it feels a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes parents get put off when they're potty training their children, when they wee their new underpants, but it's all part of the process. But I know as soon as Nate starts to feel uncomfortable, he's going to want to use that potty. It felt wonderful for the first time to see Nate put underwear on. I think Nathan was proud to wear underwear. Look at that. Woo! Wow, stylish. Yeah. So now that I took care of Nate, it's about getting Ari off the bottle. I almost feel like you guys put it in his mouth to stop him from screaming. It may be a crutch and a pacifier for Ari, but I think it's become a crutch for you guys. Oh, I think the importance is to recognise how you've got to let go of that. To wean Ari off the bottle, I'm going to limit him only to bedtime. Ari. No, not Papa. Ari. Ari. No, no screaming. Daddy has your juice in a cup. We'll leave it there on the side, on the table. Here you go. <laughs> He cried for a bit, but once he realised that Dad wasn't going to give him a bottle... A cup, too, with, with your juice. He then stopped and started to use his zippy cup. If Will and Michelle stick to it, Ari will start using his zippy cup, and before long, he'll be on a big boy cup. Nate! Hello. 
next on my list was to get Will shopping, but without being stressed out. So off we went to the store. There's a series of exercises, <laughs> the steps, and what we're going to do, OK? Step one was to give Will a shopping list to give him a sense of direction. And step two was to get the boys engaged so they would feel involved in the shopping trip. OK, what's on the list? OK, Nate. Check the list. No, we're going to stay away from the treats right now. Let me see the list. Remember, eyes at the back of your head. No, no, we're not going to have any of that. That's very... Don't touch it with your hands. Nate wasn't listening from the get-go, and Will was getting really frustrated. We don't touch the food with our hands. He can hold the bag, though. Look, you, you see, you see how much open? he could have got involved? The worst moment in the store was when Nathan had stuck his hand into the flower. Come here and help me read it, please. This is fun. Nate, we need... Focus. Nate, Nate, Nate. Come back, let's look at the list. Can you show me show me what's on the list, Nate? Will was running around like a headless chicken. Yeah. I can see you breaking a sweat. Yeah. It's you're true. panicking and you're getting a bit nervous. I can see you shaking a little bit. He's sensing that frantic nerve. Calm down okay. a bit here, all right? It's not rocket science. Stay calm and you'll have more control. Can we go up? Okay, into the car. Good job. Oh, Thank what you. A big helper. Yeah, he's big a good helper. helper. Let's move okay, it Okay, let's look, twist that around the way you twist it all up. Good job. Thank you. Lift up your voice, OK? Your tone of voice, when it's higher in pitch, it shows pleasure. It shows that you're happy at how well he's doing. Look, he wants to help you. Good job. You. OK. Ari, would you like to hold the list? Ah, you see, now you're improvising. For the teaching in the store, the best lesson that I learned was getting Nate involved. OK, Nate, I need your help, please. Giving him the list, having him hold the bag. It kept him busy, it made him feel like he was part of, and it worked. Go ahead and put that squash right up there. Good job. We did good. Thank you for all your help. What a difference. As soon as Will stopped panicking, he was able to get his shop done and manage the boys. You did fantastic. You did fantastic to what you did before. People say, good job, Dad. Oh, there you go. Before. Well done, Will. The order of business was to teach Will and Michelle how to discipline their children correctly. This is the new naughty place, not Matt. Naughty place. I barely started to explain the technique and Nate started to kick off, so I said to Michelle, give him a warning. Nathan. This is low tone voice, where is it? Where Nathan, is it? Nathan, this is your warning. OK, I want you to keep this low on the ground and play with it right. But the warning didn't stop him, so it's time for Michelle to take him to the naughty place. OK, you've been warned. We're going to go sit on the naughty place. No. Uh, don't tell him, just do it. Come. Your actions speak louder than your words. Nathan, you're on the naughty place from not playing with your toys right. You need to stay here. And right away, Nate started to test Mum's resolve. Get me, walk back and forth repeatedly. Joe kept encouraging me. You got it, Michelle, you got it. I was saying, this isn't working. I was exhausted, I was frustrated, and I was exasperated. How much longer can I do this? Listen to me. I do not pull my glasses off my face. Let go. Then he started kicking and hitting. I do not tolerate that from anyone. Come away. Come away. Nate got out again, but Mum stuck with it. Marvellous. Marvellous. And when Nate realised he wasn't going to win this one, he stayed on that naughty mat for three minutes. Nathan, you were on the naughty place because of how you used your toy. I want you to say you're sorry. Very good, Michelle. Sorry, yeah. Okay, come here. Come here, cute. I was so ecstatic that Joe could be there and encourage me and show me what to do. So I, I could not have done it on my own. <laughs> Time is a disaster in this house. So tonight, I'm introducing the stay in bed technique with a little twist. Once you've read the children a story, OK, and you've said good night, they're in their beds, hugs and kisses, one of you is going to sit on the floor like so. Mm -hmm. OK, and be completely still. When each one of your children come out of their beds, you're not going to give them eye contact. You're going to either look at the bridge of their nose or their tummy, and you're going to pick them up, and you're going to place them back into their bed, mm -hmm. and you're going to come back to position one. OK? Like so. And you're going to continue to do that until they recognise that each time you put them back, that is where they're meant to stay. 
OK. I would normally teach this technique inside the house, but because it's so cramped in there and the boys sleep in the living room, I knew I'd be a really big distraction. So I had to think outside the box on this one. So I decided I was going to support Michelle by stepping outside the house and coaching her with a monitor and some walkie-talkies. OK, I'm in the other room right now. I'm coming out with the kids. Oh, please don't talk to me, OK? You're taking direction, the pair of you, from me tonight. I was ready for anything she had, and I was going to follow it through. Night-night, <laughs> night, sweetie. Softly, softly, Michelle. <laughs> Will, take the book away and then go into the office or the bedroom. Once Will and Michelle tucked the boys into bed and she started the technique, they started to test her straight away. Ari's behind you now, do Ari. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, look at the bridge of the nose or his tummy. Keep going. Don't lose it with him, all right? And you're doing a very good job. Now stick with us, crying. He's getting fed up with it now. Stay with it. Now he's got to the point where he wants to make you mad. It was strenuous. It was frustrating. I'm hot. I'm sweaty. I want this to end, because it's torture to me as well as to the boys. Michelle, pull that strength out from somewhere, Michelle. Pull that strength out from somewhere. <laughs> OK? Keep going. I can see you're tired, but pull it from somewhere. Take his other hand. Make sure don't lose it with him, all right? If you start to pull him, he's going to know you're getting frustrated. Remember how they can read your signs. I wasn't too sure whether she was going to give up or not when she started to lose her patience with the children. No big deal. He's in the bed. <laughs> Marvellous, Michelle, I tell you, absolutely marvellous. The kids are both in the bed at the moment. Just drop that head down, shoulders shrugged, like you are completely cut off. Doing a good job, Michelle. Way to go, way to go. Look at you. Way to go, you rock. It was gruelling for Michelle, but her patience really paid off. The boys are rarely in bed before 10.30, but tonight, they were in bed by night. <laughs> I was so glad I had Joe feeding information into my ear that I could not have done this on my own. I couldn't believe how stubborn those two are. Ah, you did so well. So well. You took direction beautifully. She talked me through the whole process. I'm glad I, I completed it. I'm going to go for a few days. I'm leaving you guys with all the techniques. Stick with the routine, OK? And I want to see this being used. You're there. You're there, Michelle. Right, right. OK? With Joe leaving now for a few days, I'm concerned that we're not going to be able to implement these skills correctly. Tonight. So I've been away for a few days, and I'm really curious to see how these scientists have done with their assignment. So, Will and Michelle, are you ready to take a look at this DVD footage and see how well you've both done? We're ready. We're ready. Let's open up, then. I think you have to go to the bathroom. OK, I'll go to the bathroom with you. We're going to, well, you head toward the bathroom. in the toilet. Go, Nathan, go. You did it. Congratulations. This is fantastic. I didn't think it would happen that quickly or that easily. I love the attention there. Do we need to go? You're reminding him, and he's feeling very confident. We have a proud Nate going to the pee-pee. And even better, the other day he went number two on the toilet, and he said, Mommy, Daddy, go away. It's like, OK. And we were out the door. Are you sure you don't need help? It's like, go away. It's like, OK. And he went. I love it. Uh, no. Nathan. right now is no. I don't want you going in the fridge. <laughs> if you go in the fridge again, you'll go in the naughty place. Do you understand? Stop. <laughs> You're on the naughty place because you didn't listen to me. I want you to stay here for three minutes. <laughs> listen to me. Your timeout is up. 
When I say stay out of the fridge, you need to listen. Apologize to me. I am Daddy Mama. Do you mean it? Yes. Come here. Oh, okay, I love you. Look at you smiling. I kept checking back and he was still there. And I checked back and he was still there. So you're fundamentally laying down. A lot of good stuff here in your house. It's important we didn't have that before. We weren't implementing it right. Now we are, and it's working. OK, moving on. So here's a good cart Ferrari right here. Would you take the list? Right here, take the bag, hold it open. Dad's going to start scooping them in. There we go. Maple syrup. Pick it up. You pick it up by the bottom. Take it over to the cart. We don't need that. That's no, don't. Nathan, OK, I guess we need it now. Stop. Nathan, stop. Nathan. Nathan. He's off. Oh, dear, we've lost Nate. Ah, I should have guessed. He's at the candy. <laughs> Nate. Nathan, stop. I need your help to put some things up on the counter. Will you help me put them up? I'll hand them to you. Hey, we did it. Nothing broke. <laughs> <laughs> Great sense of humour there. You were keeping Nate focused. There was good direction, but no when to pull them reins in. When he's gone off, that's when you should have come down to his level and said, no, Nate, you stay near Daddy. We're doing the shopping. The more I engage him, the better he behaved during shopping. OK, moving on. <laughs> All right. We're, we only have Baba at night time now. <laughs> We have a sippy cup with water. We already had juice. Uh oh, what are you doing there, Will? Negotiating. Negotiating is what's happening here. <laughs> Come look. There's no Baba here. Look in here. Do you see any? Not none in here. All gone. No, no Baba in there. Uh, Baba. That's a sippy cup. Yeah, yeah, you're welcome to that. You want that? Yeah. OK. That's your big guy cup. There you go. So after a while, he recognised that he wasn't going to get the bottle, mm -hmm. all right? But you went right around the houses to get to that point, and you had to endure all the screaming. But let's take it to the next level. Let's make a very solid decision. Let's get rid of the bottles all together. All right. That yeah. sounds good. OK. Bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> here tonight. Yeah, I, I was getting a little frustrated. And tired mm -hmm. as well. You've done really, really well. Your time is getting better and better each night. You want to be able to succeed in teaching your children how to sleep in their own bed. Then you've got to put the hard work in. There's no two ways around it. Well, you guys are just constantly moving forward. Mm -hmm. These kids are learning. So are you happy with what we've seen? Yeah. Yes. Today, we are going to work on anything that needs to be tweaked. We okay. still want to use your time while we have it. All right, so let's get to it then. All right. You've done successfully well in bringing Ari from the bottle to a zippy cup. Ari was using a sippy cup during the day, so now I wanted to get him off the bottle completely. And I think to break this habit, all we need is a little magic and a big imagination. I took the family down to the beach. Hi! Where I planned a little something special. Now that Ari's a big boy, he won't need his bottles anymore. This is what we're gonna do, okay? We're gonna have him take the bottles that are in the bag over to the trash can. Over okay. There. Okay. And tell him that one of the many gods here coming, in Hawaii is coming with a special gift for him okay. in the sea. Because now he's a big boy. Right. So now he gets a magical cup that oh. he drinks with 
at night time. It was a great idea to have the new sippy cup come from the sea. We're in an ocean state, and so it's uh, natural to have the, the sea give us some of the things we need. Ari, because we live in such a special place in Hawaii, Kai, the water, is going to do something magical. So see the trash can over here? Let's put it in and see what the water has for you. I Ready? can't wait to do this! Yay! Yay! Push! 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 Yay! He had a big smile on his face when he came back from throwing away the bottles. I don't know if it was from throwing away the bottles or from the excitement about what was to come. What's that he got there? A flower. What's that he got? Ari, oh, let's go look. He's found something there. What's this? What's this? Ari, look. Uh, uh, oh, it's floating up to Ari. Ari, this is for you. Stand back here, Ari. You caught a fish. This is for you. Look what it is. Wow. Stop. This is your first fish that you've caught, isn't it? But this is a magic fish. Thank you. It was nice to tell Arya's story and get him involved and excited in this process. So he knows he's a big boy now and he has a new sippy cup. The sea brought him a gift. Uh, oh, what is that? Bubba. Bubba. Uh, it's a special wow. cup. And look. To have in the nighttime. That's it for the bottle. I think Ari will now be happy getting a sippy cup this night, his magic sippy cup and uh, that'll do it. For the day. You know, if I had known it'd been this easy with the bottle, we would have done it a long time ago. What did you catch, Ari? I don't know really whether he'll remember that he was so young, but actually it was fun and magical and mum and dad had a good time doing it. So I feel that it was very important, not just for Ari, but also for mum and dad, because they were holding on to that bottle as much as Ari was. Hooray! Ah, perfect. While Misha was off at work, I wanted to do something special with Dad that he would have never have dreamt doing with his boys on his own, and that was taking them off to a restaurant. I've got a little menu here for you, mealtime menu. Prepare and organize, eat and engage, and know when to leave, OK? OK. Sit child Reason. properly at the table, compromise with food choices, be realistic with the length of time spent at the table, mm -hmm. specify how much you want them to eat, praise and encouragement, and bring stuff with them to play with while they're waiting for food. We've brought crayons okay, we and coloring stuff, but this restaurant has also provided uh, that as well. We All right? Fun. This is one of my big fears is being out in public with the boys and having them misbehave. Here, why don't we color on the dinosaur? Let's color his neck. Yeah, let's try the green feet. Not bad. Oh, look here. There you go, look. Please. Where's your manners, Nate? Good boy. It's hard for me to imagine at their age right now that we'll be able to have that much control over the situation and have a relaxing meal. Please don't throw the plate, OK? We're not a dog eating out of a bowl. Pick up the bread with your hands and eat it with good manners. How's yours? Is it good? You're doing well. Yeah, they're doing great. Joe had worked on us be more specific, say two bites of this and one bite of that. Specify how much you want them to eat. Try a big bite of your sandwich, and then you can have some dip, OK? Have some carrot. No, you can't dip until you have one more bite. You either have to have carrot or sandwich. So One very bite. good. They're listening to you here, Will. Very, very good. This man sat there at the restaurant, very proud that he was with his sons having dinner. And, and look at me. Look what we're doing. And he kept saying, this is great, Joe. This is fantastic. I was very happy that they were able to go with me and do something like that, because I can see how we could do other things, not just dinner. We can go fishing. We could go to the beach. We could do some things together and not be the, the family over there. Look, look at them, you know? Mm. Jojo's going now. Bye-bye. Mahalo, Joe. I'd have to say thank you for getting my family back. Will you give me a hug? And I give you one and say bye-bye. Bye-bye. Oh. Joe, thank you so much for coming to our house and helping our family. From Nate and Ari, Will and myself, thank you so much. Ari, are you going to come and say goodbye to Jojo? Go say goodbye to Auntie. Bye. Bye. Thanks for Bye. all your help. You're welcome. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. You've made such a big difference. Uh, you're welcome. Take care, Cheeky Monkey. Take care, Cheeky Monkey. Take care of yourself. Thank you. All right? And keep up your hard work. Bye. Bye-bye. Will and Michelle are highly educated parents, and they've read all the books, but they just couldn't make the connection. Now they know what they need to be doing, and they're doing it right and I'm really proud of them. And if I had to grade them, I'd give them an A+. Joe has changed our life tremendously. 
we can go places without kids getting out of control because we know the naughty, naughty place comes with us. Look, I can only get in this far. We looked at all the things that have been accomplished. Nate's been potty trained. Ari's off the bottle. We have tools to put the kids to bed now so we have our own life. Since Joe has taught us all these ways to change Nate and Ari's behavior, she, she really helped change our behavior, and that was the primary thing. And with that, we have more calm. <laughs> oh, look up at the trees, wow. It's a great thing to be able to play with your kids. Okay, you wanna try it? It's a great thing to be able to be a parent when you need to and, and to do that right. Hold on with your hands. I can be the dad that I need to be. And hold on to that knot, you ready? Before, we didn't have time with each other. We were so busy dealing with the kids, we didn't have a moment alone. Now the kids are in bed at a good time, and we have time to play games, watch a movie. We can do stuff. Wiggle your toes. Wiggle them out. Good shot. Come on, kids. Where we were compared to where we are now, it's definitely a liberated sense to be able to, to, to have control back. Joe's given us hope that we can live together in more harmony, and that hasn't happened before.